Welcome to a little separate section of Lava Beds National Monument here in Northern California. This little area is known by the Park Service as Petroglyph Point, uh, but to geologists, this feature here is known as Prisoner's Rock. Um, don't know the story there, but it might be an interesting one. And here we are up at the base of Prisoner's Rock, looking at this cliff face here, um, just for a little bit of regional context. Out here in the distance to the west is the Medicine Lake Volcano. You might see some of the little bumps here in the middle ground, some of the cinder cones that are in the main part of Lava Beds National Monument. Um, thanks for joining me today, geology professor Sean Wilsey, out exploring some of the great geologic sites of Northern California. And let's take a good look at this thing. There's also a a big archaeological component, as the name suggests, with petroglyphs. We'll walk down here in a bit and look at some of the petroglyphs left here. So we're here in the Thule Lake uh, Basin. The lake is out this way and is a lot smaller than it used to be, not just because of the climate, but also because of diversions and irrigation projects that occurred in the early 20th century. But let's take a look at this thing. It's this kind of brown colored material. There is, if we back up a bit, there is some crude layering to it. Maybe you can see some of that up here in this alcove running like this. Uh, as we head to the north, we can see a big orange patch of rock. Then it goes back to more of this uh, tan or brown color. But let's take a look at it up close and see if we can figure this thing out together. Um, so it appears to be made out of particles. We can see chunks of rock making it up and some of the rocks, you can see some of the relative sizes of the rock here. Uh, there's some bigger ones down there. Um, and because we're mainly seeing volcanic rocks, more specifically chunks of basalt in here, uh, this looks like yet another volcano, but unlike most of the volcanoes at lava beds, this one's very different. Different color, different shape, geometry, uh, even the size is a little bit different than the cinder cones and spatter cones and some of the other types of um, volcanoes we saw over at the main part of lava beds. And if you've been with me through a lot of my other videos, especially some of the ones in Idaho, you might start to recognize some of the features we've seen previously. This has all the characteristics of what we call a hydrovolcano or phreatomagmatic volcano, meaning that the magma was interacting with water when it erupted. And in this case, we would either have Thule Lake, uh, ancient Thule Lake is the likely candidate, or perhaps groundwater, or perhaps a little bit of both, I suppose. Um, we've got a lot of lichen on it here. This has been dated at about 275,000 years old, so that's the age of uh, this volcano. Let's head up here to some better, more fresh exposures. We can definitely see here some of the layering, which is outward from the center. The center is uh, up over this ridge here, um, nicely shows up on Google Earth or in an aerial view. Um, and so the dips are away, and this is what we would typically see with these types of volcanoes, as the lava is interacting with the water, um, that's quenching the lava, it's flashing all that water to steam, which is an expansion process. And that then uh, creates explosive conditions where the lava is thrown out of the vent and accumulates along the flank of the vent. So we can see we've got these primary clasts here of basalt that were quenched during the eruption, thrown out. Um, and then a lot of this brown material, which is essentially tough, um, but it's been altered. And then as we swing around this way, it becomes a little more orange to yellow. And again, if you've been with me on some of my other videos, you might recognize this as an alteration product known as pelagonite. So when this uh, volcanic material gets quenched, 
Uh, an alteration product of that is a material called pelagonite, which typically has this orange-brown color to it. Let's head over here to this little outcrop. Then we'll go look at the, the petroglyphs. And so we'll get a good view of this from the air um, in order to classify it. Remember these hydrovolcanoes, a little different classification system than the typical cinder cone, stratovolcano, shield volcano system you might have used in the past. This specific volcano isn't quite steep enough and tall enough overall to be considered a tough cone. So this has been classified as a tough ring. Um, and so it would involve uh, interaction with the magma and the water taking place at a shallower level so that it kind of sprays all that material out into a much more um, broad region forming uh, the volcanic edifice, the feature itself. Okay, now we can get back over a little closer here. Um, the birds must really love it because at the base, they must do a lot of nesting up here. At the base of all of these cliffs, there's just all that white stuff is bones um, from mice, little mammals, other sorts of things. Uh, anyway, back to the geology. So here's a nice size clast here uh, embedded in the tuff. Um, there was one back there that was maybe beach ball size. So presumably this had the force and the power to eject good sized particles out of the, the vent. Another big clast right here in the tuff. And then we'll talk a little bit about how this fits in with uh, the lake that was here. There's been some erosion when the lake was higher of this volcano. And then down here, what we get to is uh, this fenced off area, which has the petroglyphs. And I don't know much about these. Uh, the Modoc people lived here for a long time. Uh, my guess is that these probably predate them. So if you look underneath there in the white, uh, you might be able to see some of the little lines, zigzags. There are the, the petroglyphs. Um, and the white staining here, this is caliche. So this is where the lake was higher at some point, And those lake waters actually stained the, the tuff, the cliff face. Um, and this was the surface that they ended up uh, inscribing into to make these petroglyphs. But this panel runs for, I can s almost see the end of it. Maybe it's long, it's maybe 200 yards long, um, 200 meters. And so, you know, probably just doodling in their spare time, but who knows? Uh, I'm not an archeologist by any means. Um, so we'll go down and look at a couple more. There's some really nice ones down here. Um, the park service has put up a nice fence to keep people from vandalizing these. Um, but you're welcome to kind of pause the frame. Look at these. There's all sorts of different shapes, zigzags. Uh, there's this one pattern here to me maybe is like a fish or something. I don't know. Um, let's go down a little further. So these ones are interesting. These have like some white uh, material filling in some of the scratches. So I don't know if that was something they did or was done later. There's obviously some like obviously um, things that have come in later. There's some initials up here uh, before the fence got put up and protected it. Uh, and then another thing that's interesting here is notice I'm standing on solid rock, right? This is still more of the tough. And if we look at the geometry that the 
ground makes here with the cliff, this is actually a, a wave cut shoreline. So you can see the ground is pretty flat here and then it just curves up here. So what we would have had, and we knew this anyway with the caliche staining, but ancient Thule Lake was lapping up against these cliffs here, staining it with caliche. And then the other part of the equation would be that there would have been um, big waves wind generated waves that would have come smashing in against this cliff causing some of the undercutting so as you look down the way through the fence at this um, curved flared shape here along the bottom of the cliff that that might be part of that so um, we'll go down a little bit farther there's maybe a nice one to end on nice little section of petroglyphs right here so Anyway, just a lot to digest here. A little bit of juxtaposition of geology with archeology span combined. So hope you enjoyed this little journey to Prisoner's Rock Petroglyph Point in Lava Beds National Monument. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate you like sharing, subscribing, helping me educate and spread the things I love and know about uh, the earth with others. And if you want to donate, there's a thanks button, the bottom right of the viewer. There's a PayPal link under all the video descriptions. And there's a donate button on the banner of the YouTube homepage. So till next time, thanks for joining me on this little adventure to Lava Beds National Monument.